distinguished uh, guests, ladies and gents, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, the uh, modern globally competitive economy demands continuous improvements of products, services and business processes if companies are to survive. This need to increase innovation performance was highlighted in a Department of Industry report last year called Australia 2030. The higher education sector has a key role in facilitating such innovation through education of people and investment in research and development. Modelling from cadence economics shows that organisations who have collaborated with Australia's universities have uh, achieved an average return of $4.50 for every dollar invested in R&D. There's a strong case also to improve innovation in our defence sector, where it's more about enhancing capability within an increasingly competitive security environment. The Centre for Defence Industry Capability notes that uh, investment in innovation will help to ensure defence remains resilient to emerging threats and to take advantage of new or developing areas of technology that have the potential to provide a capability edge for Australia's relatively small force. Now the university sector is pivotal to achieving this outcome for defence through its research and education programs. Defence has recognised this potential uh, at, for both aspects of innovation. For R&D, the allocation of funding into the Next Generation Technologies Fund and the Defence Innovation Hub provides the incentive for universities and industry to contribute to future capabilities for the ADF. For education, the Defence has uh, committed to release an industry skilling and STEM strategy to help defend, uh, develop the uh, workforce behind the Defence Force. I'd like to pay particular note to the Defence Science and Technology Group, which has transformed over the past five years from an internal focus to seeking to harness the potential of academia and industry. DST established the Defence Science Partnership in 2014, which it uses to engage with 32 Australian universities. And such partnerships are critical to innovation. The best innovation comes from collaboration, not from isolation. Collaboration means that efforts are multidisciplinary, they embrace diversity of thought and are aligned with the need. Trying to deal with the complexity of 32 universities may be a bit overwhelming for defence. The introduction of state-based coordination mechanisms are helping to deal with that complexity. In 2016, WA's four public universities, Curtin, Edith Cowan, Murdoch and the University of Western Australia, began a collaborative defence partnership, initially focused on maritime systems, but subsequently opening up to other areas of defence research. Now, I must say there's been a uh, historic reluctance by defence to look west for R&D assistance, instead favouring traditional partnerships and in particular, universities within close proximities of st defence stakeholders and laboratories. However, the situation is improving with opportunities now increasingly based upon merit rather than location. There's an increasing recognition in defence that the WA universities have things to offer, including in maritime engineering, autonomy, data science, cyber security, human performance, space systems, sensors, medical countermeasures and materials. Indeed, in, as reflected in our capability statement, of which there's a copy up the back, uh, which was released earlier this year, the WA universities have significant expertise in eight out of Defence's ten technology priority areas, but also have niche contributions to make in the other two. Our vision for uh, a greater innovation to enhance defence's capability will have the best chance of success if we make certain changes. And I'm going to venture to identify six critical shifts we need to make in the time I have remaining. Firstly, a national commitment to innovation needs to make corrections for deficiencies in the current system. And I'm talking specifically about the under-enrolment of people in STEM education, 
and our low level of R&D investment. Australia's spend on R&D is less than the uh, OECD average. Second change, traditional approaches of competition between R&D organisations must cede to a collaborative culture. R&D problems are complex and therefore they need uh, the relevant expertise from the best in breed researchers to be brought to those different aspects of a research problem. Innovation will be best served through multidisciplinary, multi-institutional R&D efforts. In WA, we see the collaboration between our universities as a key dif differentiator in our approach to research and have established a common system for multi-institutional research called IPREP. Thirdly, we need to work closely with industry to ensure R&D is relevant to real world problems and that there is a prospect that it will lead to a realised capability. The WA universities are committed to real world outcomes and have a history of achievement with industry in other sectors such as mining. We're now seeing uh, an increase in partnerships with defence industry and, and Vince mentioned one a little bit earlier with Curtin and the universities are welcoming not just a funding stream but industry's active involvement in research. The fourth shift is that we all need to recognise that the very nature of work is going to change and is changing under what people are calling the fourth industrial revolution, enabled by developments such as artificial intelligence, connectivity and autonomy. Work that is repetitive or is dull, difficult, dangerous, dirty or dear is increasingly going to be automated both within defence and within industry. Universities are and will be involved in developing the technologies to fully enable this revolution and are working with government and industry to appreciate what education and skilling the future workforce needs. Additionally, uh, a, a, I'd like to uh, iterate a comment that was made by Craig Valley earlier today. It's not just about delivering the technology, but it's about delivering the trust associated with that technology. The fifth shift is to achieve a greater level of agility if we are going to make uh, the best advantage of innovation. Universities are starting to become more responsive to research tasking and defence is uh, trying to adopt uh, technologies, although their adoption can be constrained by the timeframes associated with the integrated investment program, whether that be fiscal planning, capability development or acquisition processes. The final shift is for our universities and industry to achieve a new level of flexibility in R&D managed across multiple dimensions. These dimensions may be uh, for different sectors, noting that a lot of R&D is of a dual use uh, nature, with different partners, uh, for domestic or export markets, and at different security levels. We need to manage these different dimensions of R&D activities within a structured and security conscious uh, approach consistent with our national interests. Ladies and gentlemen, the WA universities are well placed to deal with these shifts and to deliver value to defence through our existing and our evolving arrangements. The proposed introduction by government of a defence research centre as announced this morning will reinforce our strengths and make it even easier for defence and industry to gain advantage from us. On behalf of my colleagues at the four WA universities, I'd like to thank the state government for their initiative and I'd also like to thank you for your attention. Thanks.